So I have a very odd uh, habit, uh, collecting habit. And for me, it's vintage watercolor palettes. And so today I'm gonna actually give you all a tour of my entire collection. And there is one surprise that's gonna come towards the end of the video where I'm gonna reveal um, a really elaborate palette that I ordered months ago that I've not really broken into. So I'm gonna be opening it live here uh, during the session. If you're here on replay, I'd love for you to say hey in the comments, team replay, and go ahead and give this video a boot. But friends, let's get into it. So when I talk about vintage palettes, um, here's kind of what I mean. I'm just gonna give you a looky-loo at one. So years ago, I discovered that there are these old kids' watercolor palettes. They're tin, right? And I was like, wait a minute. I wonder if a half pan would fit in those. And I'm sure I wasn't the first person doing them. But, you know, it was, it was, it was a discovery moment for me. And these are old, so they can be a little funky to open. So I thought to myself, could a half pan fit in here? Here's a full pan, you know, like, and then would it still close? And by golly, it did. It did still close. So from that time on, I started um, transitioning my watercolor collections uh, into pans, first and foremost, and then into these vintage palettes. Now, I know you're all are thinking like, well, Christy, you just like launched your empty watercolor palettes. What are you going to do now? And I'm like, wow, I'm going to use both. So anywho, we're going to um, take a look at this collection and uh, just chat about it. And whatever questions you have, ask me. And um, I'm going to show you some of the paints that are that originally came in these palettes. Um, I'm going to show you what I have inside, some of the new paints that I have inside some of these palettes. And uh, let's paint with them a little bit. And yeah. Let's, let's just do this. Let's do it. So this one is one that I haven't done anything with yet. I just, uh, for, when I found it, it was pretty rare. Uh, I had never seen it before at the point. So, you know, the circus vibe. And what I love about this one is the gentleman here in the, in the bottom right corner, apparently he needs to be, um, you know, watched by his lady. She can't draw too. She has to just idolize his mastery here, but he is sketching the circus. And I just think that is so cheeky and fun. Um, so this one you'll notice, uh, made in England, right there. Um, and let's see on the back. Yeah, so this is Page of London or Page London. I've always called it Page of London, but um, I'm not sure that's actually accurate. But that is the V brand that most often appears in my collection. Um, so there, I feel like, I don't know the history on them. If anybody does, go ahead. Um, yeah, so 50s, right? Uh, so if you know any more history about Page London, let me know. Um, but they are the primary source, it seems, of these gorgeous, these gorgeous kiddo tins, right? This is a newer, a lot of the ones that I'm showing you right now are newer ones that I haven't done any, newer meaning I've recently purchased them. Um, also made in England. I'm pretty sure this is Page of London. Maybe it's not. Oh, maybe it's not. This one did not come with any paint. Little kangaroo mama. Um, and at least this gal's got her own, you know, artwork. Again, though, the boy, the boy is, you know, the active artist. And this is one of the messier insides. There used to be paint chips in here. This one came without them. And then I literally, you can literally pry these trays out. They're very easy to pry out. It's just, you wanna watch for, you know, rough edges. And I wouldn't do it with this plastic. I usually do it with a screwdriver because all these edges, once you pry it out, are very sharp, very sharp. This one's a little newer, Angora. And it's got a plastic interior with the paints inside. It has this little sticker on it. What does this say? Made in West Germany. Marilla. Don't know what all this means. My guess is this is somewhere from the 80s or even early 90s, to be quite honest. Um, and I want to paint with this paint. And so I'm not going to spray this because these paints have the most lovely 
imprint on them. It's very difficult to see. It says Angora. It says Angora, three ounce. Angora, three ounce. It just goes round and round. Just get a little color from the middle. Oh, these are chalky. That's for sure. But I love the tin. It just screams. It, it feels very 80s to me. Color star. Oh, gosh, there's, like, no color in that color. Look at that. <laughs> That's terrible. Sometimes you get really surprised, and you'll see soon, there are a few palettes that I have not removed the paint from because they're just fabulous. The colors are actually really interesting and fabulous. Um, and then there's some where it's like, oh, good Lord, I wouldn't want my child to paint with this. But, you know, it's still fun. I was just reading a comment from Brock is that when you do remove the inserts and in a lot of the palettes, it makes them flimsy. Um, let's see if I have one here that I could show you an example. Yeah, this one doesn't have an insert in it. So the inserts removed from this one and you'll see it does make it flimsy. Now, when you fill it up with paint, it gets better, but I have never, and you can kind of hear that, you can press it, but I've never, it's never interfered with the function of me using it as a palette filled with, filled with my own half pans. It really hasn't. The one thing that, um, you know, see how that, that closes beautifully. I just put the full pan in there. Beautiful. Yeah. But that's a really good point. If you have like sensory stuff and that, that might bother you, just something to think about. Yeah. Brock, honestly, what do I do to resolve this with mine? I don't do anything. <laughs> I just deal with it. Um, but like I said, when I when the palette does get full of, of the magnets, the half pans, um, it tends to firm up. It tends to firm up a bit. Love this one. Got it recently. I'm a big fan of this, like, style. I don't know if you can see. These are, like, raised, these little, and they're, like, little mixing wells when you open it up. And I just think it's so cute. I have a larger one that has this kind of style. This one's just freaking adorable. Just freaking adorable. Happy beach day. I'm really not loving. Okay, so here's the thing. These are from the 50s earlier. Some of the imagery is very culturally insensitive. And so there are some that I outright just won't even own. Um, and yeah, so this one I was like, oh. So I bought it, but some of the imagery, you know, when you know better, you do better. I get it. I'm not trying to be like whatever, but there's just certain things that feel ick in my soul to own. So I can't, I don't, um, I'm not saying you shouldn't own them. I'm just saying it's just me. So I love day at the beach. Yay. Let's see. I forget what the condition on the inside is. All right. See, there's one of the paint chips rolling around in here. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it out. Can you see that? You can hear them rolling around in here. Yeah. Now, some of you may remember I did a video. Do you remember the video? That you probably know what I'm going to talk about. I did the video where I took all, I was collecting all these paint chips and I organized them by um, color family and mold them into new paints and I made a Franken palette. I'll go ahead and link that below. If you're watching on replay, it should be down there. Um, and just go ahead and watch it. Um, this is actually one of the colors from the Franken palette because there's always a lot of really cute pinks in these old palettes. And so, yeah, oh, it's nice and cured now. It took forever to cure. Oh my gosh, because I used a lot of honey and glycerin. Anyhow, really fun. Definitely want to check out that video if you haven't seen it. All right, here we've got a court jester dressed in Pepsi Cola attire. No, I'm kidding. Finest water colors. And the donkey, this is one of the most hysterical ones. Like he's painting with the donkey's tail. I can't even. I can't even. Um, this one appears to be a little newer. I'm going based on the 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 lack of oxidation on the on the paint chips. We don't have a brand here. This does not feel Page of London to me, though. I'll be honest. Um, another thing that you can do with the paint chips. I have a really tiny piece here, um, but some of them. This one not as much. Some of them you can actually draw with, depending on the brand. So that's fun. Okay, how did that happen? Oh, yes, that's right. When I ordered the circus one, I ended up with two. We might have to do a giveaway. It was a lot of two. 
we might have to do a giveaway. We just might. All right. So let's get into some that are a little different. These have paint in them. So this is not actually a watercolor tin. This was a vintage cigarette tin that I just thought was so gorgeous. Look at that. Ten Longfellow cork. Just so beautiful. Very sturdy. And so I turned it into a palette. I've done some of these before. I've shown some of these before. I think I had a handmade watercolor brand haul. Um, and this was one of them. One of them. Um, this brand is, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, I forget. Julia, Julia K Studio. And Julia's paints are just redonkulously gorgeous. You barely have to. You barely have to add water. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous. Look at that. Look at how that pink just, yeah. So um, you can think about ways to, um, you know, repurpose. Love, love repurposing. Julia Case colors usually are um, kind of imagined after different movies, there's Harry Potter um, references in this one. Let me see. Like, she gave me little samples. This one's called George. Um, I forget what that one's from. I love her sample cards, too. Aren't they cute? And she does uh, mention uh, pigment numbers, which I know is important to many. Um, Kirsten, it's a metallic. Let's take a look. And her sample, her little sample, oh, my brush was dirty. Her little sample nuggets, or whatever you want to call them, are so generous. Look at that. That made such a lovely color with my dirty brush. Oh, I need to use these. I miss these. Her opaque colors are out of this world. Out of this world. They're so creamy. Look at that. Gorgeous. Let's take a look at comments. Do you pick versus cover or size or both per brand? Nicole, do you mean like, do I choose the palettes I purchased based on the cover or the size and both, um, but usually the cover first. Yummy me colors, I know. Oh, George Weasley, okay, yes. So that's from the Harry Potter, there we go. Yeah, I have a bunch from the Harry Potter collection, yes. Two Mission Gold and an Art Whale 24 Tubes. Yeah, yeah. You could turn those into pans and then get them into a vintage palette. Yes, you could. Friends, are we having a good time? If you are, whether you're here live, whether you're on the replay, let me know. Give this video a boop. That's a thumbs up. That lets me and, and YouTube know that you're having fun and that they need to send others our way. Look at that gold. Isn't that pretty? I love that. All right, anywho, here's another example of not an actually watercolor palette. This is one of my favorites. Um, I believe these were, are these little cigarettes? I think it's in a different language. I forget. Anywho, these are, I know she, the, Mint Gardner is doing something with Stone Ground, but before Stone Ground, this is, this is that brand that she did some collaborations with. Really pretty. A lot of opacity. I forget the name. Rory? Something Rory and something. Something and Rory. Anywho, I am a sucker for little baby, little baby palettes like this. They're really fun to travel with. I will grab palettes based on the mood of where I'm traveling. And so um, the little baby palettes are so fun for that. This is one of my favorite, this Lindsay's Quality Watercolors. Um, I have two of these. This one's made in the USA. Glenside PA. It came originally with a brush. I think the first one that I had came with something very similar to this. It was like a cardboard card, of course, sized appropriately, and had the little the little paint chips kind of glued on. Um, it has since 
disappeared. Um, but right now, I think, are these my, what's in here? Nation red from, from where? Turner. These are my turners. These, these vintage palettes look the best when they're fully filled. They can look a little chaotic when you don't have a full collection in them yet. Um, but you know, it's all right. Turner's fun. But I love this one because the lid is separate um, and because it nests. See that? So cute. Yeah, there is a lot of yellow in there. I was very curious about the opacities of some of these yellows. So knowing full well, I could have mixed them, but I was very curious about what they were doing with their formula and opacity. And then of course I use, I use these lids to mix. So look at this, 29 cents. I'm feeling like this thing is in hella good shape for how old it is. My guess is, gosh, it could be late 40s, early 50s. Dang, that's in good shape. There's not even a bit of rust on there. Lucky me. Mm. This one, Arcadian Watercolors, uh, Binny and Smith Inc., New York, made in the USA. I love these little stick drawing, stick figures. So cute. Um, and this uh, is my, is this my blueberry? Is this my, yeah, this is my, um, what's the blueberry? Oh my gosh, she's like the OG of, of uh, handmade watercolors for the love. This is one of her Mayan blues. I think this is Mayan blue, yeah. Green leaf and blueberry, is that what it is? Yeah, this is my green leaf and blueberry collection. This gal actually went out, um, I know she's in incorporating different pigments now, but she used to literally go out and dig stuff out of the earth to make paints with um, in the early days, so yeah. So cute. So this is more of, you're starting to get into like, when you think of like the Crayola, um, that, that kind of size container, you're going to see a lot of these out there in the marketplace. If you're curious and starting your own collection, this size, um, they don't hold a ton, but they are great for just giving a little beauty and cuteness to your smaller collections from different brands. Super fun. And honestly, they're great too. Like one thing that I do, um, if I have friends or family that I, I think are curious about watercolor, I'll do little gifts and I'll make gifts. And this size tin is so great for that um, to make them a little palette. All right. This one I have in, let's see here. I use this stupid stick on, sorry. Sorry to say stupid, but I went through a period where I was using, um, because these came from, from the maker and they didn't have, um, they didn't have uh, magnets on them. So I'm like, oh, I'll just get the stick on magnets. And yeah, they suck. Sorry. I apparently like to say suck today. Um, the brand is, um, I'm so bad. The, this is from my days of not swatching and not labeling. And um, those days continually come back to bite me in the arse. Um, honey bee, hunt bee, it's something with a bee. Something with a bee. And she also changed her name right around the time I started collecting her watercolors. And that made things even more difficult for my brain. Um, but really pretty, uh, these, a lot of opaques again. I find like a lot of the handmade paint makers seem to love opaques. I don't know what the reason is behind that. I don't know if there is like some kind of like many like a mulling thing with the way the paints is, are made that it's easier to to have opacity. I don't know, but I see a lot of opacity in handmade watercolors. Velcro, yes, you know Nessa, the big. The big, thick glue dots work really well. Like, 
really well. They just add height. So mm, I, I struggle sometimes. Um, but they are annoying too. Um, I'm always adding to my collection. So if I have to pull things out, which I often do, you can imagine. So this is one of my favorite little quirks. A lot of these vintage palettes will say non-poisonous. Like that used to be the way to say it. Non-toxic wasn't a thing or it just wasn't a thing in England where these were made. So I love when it says non-poisonous, like, thank you, Roger that. That's hysterical. Um, the brand here just is made in England. This is, I don't think this is Page of London. Although the blue, the blue, that kind of iconic blue back, that's very Page of London. So who knows? Anybody have any ideas? Anybody? Anybody? Oh gosh, it's loud. Um, I, you will find that these, they're always going to kind of vary a little bit in how tall they are. This one, it was a little harder these half pans were like the overfull style where they kind of mounted on top. So when if I travel with it, I have traveled with this. I put a little rubber band around it. If you have a big enough clip, put a paper towel down first and you can clip it to keep it shut, you know, just so it doesn't scratch. But that's fun. Love that one. The artwork on these is just so fun. This is a page of London. This is a much newer page of London. You can see the logo has changed. Um, very, very annoyed though. Annoyed, but also fascinated. So for me, it becomes a really cool part of my collection that all of this like pedestrian type info is on the front, like right in the middle of the artwork. Like seriously, cause the artwork is so cool. It's like a Noah's Ark vibe. So, so beautiful. Now, this is interesting. We know this one's Page of London, but that, that iconic imprint is not on the back. So maybe that one that I just showed you was indeed a Page of London as well. Oh my gosh, there's a magnet stuck to this. And this is my Poems About You collection. This was so generously gifted to me. And I am a fan. Friends, you know, there's always that joke that I have more paints. You know, people always say, I have more paints than I'll ever paint within a lifetime. And that is so true for me. It's so true. Um, I love poems about you. She has this most delightful um, hybrid of opacity. Her opacity is more just about the pigment load, I feel. The pigment load on her formulation is just out of this world. So you can get such gorgeous coverage so quickly and easily with poems about you. Let's take a look at that artwork again, though. Isn't that great? I love it. I know, the animal one. And this one, I do. I, I saw this once and bought it. I have never seen it again. Oh, OK, Nessa says the alum type that can make the opacity. Also, some use calcium carbonate substrate. Interesting. The calcium carbonate would make it more opaque, really. Interesting. I always learn from y'all. I love it. That's why I love lives. Okay. Here's another one of those like little um, kind of standard size when I talked about the Crayola. Um, Amico, watercolors. I don't know if the two word thing is so funny to me. There's so many curious aspects to these vintage palettes. Um, you know, this is in the U.S. This is made in the U.S.A., but watercolors is two words. Like, what? So cute, though. Um, cool imprint on the back, but also something like this is, what does this say? CP certified CP products, Crayon Watercolor and Craft Institute. Okay. Interesting. Um, love the, the um, I don't know if I call this, just just the, the way that the metal was, um, imprinted. That's not the right word. Um, you can see what I mean though. It's dimensional. Isn't that gorgeous? I, I, when I saw this one, I was like, that's coming with me because of that right there. Oh yeah. The plant type could be more op opaque. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. 
the graphic on the navy is amazing, isn't it? With the gold. Isn't that gorge? Gorgeous. And this is um, Colorado. Col um, help me. Oh, for the love. This was in my handmade roundup. Boulder colors. There we go. Boulder, Colorado. You see where I was going with those. Boulder colors. And this one was fun. When These were also gifted to me so generously. Oh, dirty brush. Oh, gosh. I have to put those back. Those samples. These samples have to go back. Y'all, look at this color. I love this color. Look at that. This one is called... Her magnets are the real deal. This one's called Bougainvillea. Bougainvillea. Villa. Villa. I've, I've been criticized for pronouncing that wrong. FYI, do not criticize people for pronouncing words wrong. They might actually have a learning disability. <laughs> Just don't do it. <laughs> oh, let's see. Embossed? Janine, is embossed the right word? Embossed. Embossed. Yeah, I think... It almost feels like it's like um, the opposite of letterpress when, it, when you talk about paper. And Jennifer, you're allowed to correct me because you know me well enough. <laughs> okay, Nessa says, I want to I wanna highlight this. I'm so, I'm just fascinated. Oh, wait, no, this is the wrong one. In making paint to, oh, Nessa, I see your, 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 little, your little icon. You're mulling paint. Of course, you know what you're talking about. Um, in making paint to preserve blue hues, you kind of need calcium carbonate as sodium carbonate turns those colors green. So fascinating. So fascinating. Yeah. Interesting. Judith, is that, is that why that we didn't learn by, by using phonics? Is that why? Okay. Virginia says, I'm sad to be at work right now and have to watch the replay, but Hi. Hello. Um, I do have a tin of watercolor pencils from Holland. Brunzeel? Brunzeel? I had bought them for my son in the 70s. <gasps> Donna, will you e e email me a picture? I would love to see those. Me too, Christy, on some words. I have to say 10 words to get around the, to that word. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. It is, you know. To this day, um, there's one of the cheeses. Oh gosh, I still don't say it right half the time, and people laugh at me. And I'm like, I just can't. I just can't. And then to make matters worse, I'm one of those people that likes to like um, make up new words, like conversate. <laughs> it's not a word, but I I will like make up words that just sound fun. So then like. It's very confusing for people. I'm just a confusing person, so it's all good. Oh, this is a beautiful one. Also, Page of London with that newer logo. This looks like almost like very 70s to me, maybe late 60s. Very mod, mid-century kind of vibe. Made in England. Um, but look at the artwork. Isn't that great? I, I don't find this to be... This one, I was like, because there's so much cowboys and Indians and it can get a little ick. And this one I felt was very respectful. Um, the look on this dude's face, though, has me a little worried. There's about to be a throwdown. I don't know. I don't know. This guy looking really, really proud of himself. You know, I love like just really digging into the artwork from these different eras. It's so funny. Love you. Confused and not confused. Always entertaining. I, I, I'm something. Yeah. I make up words to fit my need often. You know, there's a book, um, there's a bunch of books that I've read about writing and about, and there, there is actually a skill. There's, there's a known skill for kind of tweaking the English language in a way where you almost become like a sculptor of meaning um, and using words in really interesting ways. And maybe it's it's my difficulty with comprehension and pronunciation that actually makes me more, more prone to um, indulge in some of that kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't know. What is this? This has been used a lot. Um, this is, 
Oh my gosh. See, this is why one of my goals this year is to, to, to swatch everything and to freaking remember. Oh no, this is the B. This is the B set. That's right, because she uses the B logo. Anybody recognize this logo that can remind me of the name? It has B in it. It has B. Someone look up handmade watercolors with the name B in it, because that's what those are. Those other ones were something else. I use these a lot for a time. I'm, I'm like, my watercolor paint obsession is a lot like my music, music obsessions. What is in there? It's a little piece of paper towel. I will just go for like a year using the same palette sometimes, or at least, you know, using it often. Oh, that's right. These have to sit in their moisture for a little bit to really activate beautifully. But once they do, lordy, lordy. Alchemy Soul, thank you. But she changed your name, didn't she? Or did she change her name to Alchemy Soul? Hold the phone, find me a Sharpie. Look at this one. Oh, this is interesting. This has the new logo on the front and that beautiful imprint on the back. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, I'm looking for a Sharpie, hold on. Ow. Alchemy Soul Arts. Woo! Never again will I forget. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Friends, are we having a good time? Is this interesting? Do you like seeing the quirky things that, you know, the reasons that I bought these palettes? If you do, it, uh, head into comments and say yes, more. Um, if you don't, I don't know. You know, be like Thumper's mom said. Um, okay, love this copycat. I have a couple of these. So flipping hysterical. This little kitty cat. I don't know why kitty cat is painting with two hands on the brush, um, but I find it very, very delightful. I love this little, this little logo. 12 mixing pans, brush, 32 colors. And it's got that mixing tray vibe that I love so much, um, like this one. I just, I adore that style. And this one's a little smaller. Now I forget, I think there's paint in here. Yes, this is the one it's missing. Nope, it's not missing any, that's right. All right, I'm painting with this bad boy, hold on. I knew this was in here somewhere. Um, and I kept thinking in my head, I want to paint with this one live for the first time because she's untouched and I'm about to touch her. That sounded inappropriate. Um, I love this. Oh, some of these vintage tins have color names, light blue, yellow green, light green. This one's made in the U.S. I think this was added by the seller. A little bit of rust there. Nothing on the back. Ah! Now, hopefully when I paint with these, it'll maybe solidify these chips back into their holes. All right, let's do this in a sprayer. All right, I am using, if you're curious as to why this brush looks like mine, but doesn't look like mine, it's a prototype for um, my new travel brush collection. It's gonna be a travel quarter inch dagger. So I am testing them out. I'm gonna do a quick, I did an iris the other night in Patreon and it made me happy. So I'm gonna, oh, I don't know. You're not terrible. Oh, you're moving on the page. That is, Look at that, these colors are nice.
with that. All right. Double dip time, triple dip time. I don't like the thickness. This feels so thick on in my hand. I'm not I'm not feeling it. And it's gonna go back to the manufacturer. No way, no. All right. The colors are so surprisingly delightful. I wonder how old this is. Anybody have any guesses? Anybody? Anybody? Mm. Oh, that green. Look at that lovely green. It's called, what's that called? RK green? Uh, okay. Whatever you say. See, vanity names aren't a new thing. <laughs> lovely. I like brushes with artwork on them too. Oh, me too. I used to dream of having my art in books and on art supplies like you do. Gina, why don't you keep dreaming? Keep dreaming and doing. Um, so the rust on that one, do you try to repair it? Um, okay, great question. The rust on this one, um, yes. I would probably try to do a little spritz of like kills, which is like a stain blocking primer. Um, this, because the rust is right in the middle of the mixing tray, you don't see that a lot often. Often the rust is like out here and I don't worry too much about it. But yes, this one, I would cover this and just do a little. Yeah. Little kills. K-I-L-Z. I think that's how you spell it. Um, and that's going to prevent the rust from, from continuing. Uh, so yeah, get the flower away. Okay. Let's do it. Paint some more on it though. All right, let's do a giveaway. Love that idea. I'm gonna give away the flower. That blue is strong. Oh, uh, let's see. What could I ask? What could I ask? Um, sorry, my brain is painting. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Does that happen to you? I'm so used to talking and painting at the same time, but sometimes still, oh my gosh, my brain's like, nope, sorry, Charlie. Just gonna have to wait. Just gonna have to wait. Um, I know, they're so fun to paint. I know the people on here are great, Jess. Um, all right. Going to give the flower away. Ooh, that blue. Look at that blue. Isn't that gorge? Okay. Okay. Coco Chanel, this one. Get out of there, Christy. All right. So I'm going to give away this piece. I'm going to sign it right now. Um, I'm just trying to think of what to ask to give it away. Okay. If you're paying attention to the conversation with our paint maker in the group, there was an ingredient that was used when hand making um, blue pigments. And if you don't use, if you don't use this ingredient, but you use the other, it turns the blues to what color? First one to get it right gets the painting. We were talking about two ingredients in handmade paint making. I'm not asking for the ingredient. It turns blue to what color? It turns blue to what color if you don't use the right ingredient? Yep. Cindy, wait, 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 wait. Who got it? Sama. Sama got it. It turns blue to green if you don't use the right carbonate. <laughs> yeah. Sama, you can go ahead and email. Um, uh, you can go ahead and email hello at christyrice.com and let Kristen know that you won the iris painting. Yay. I'm going to let her dry before I take her off the thing because you know what will happen. But this is a treasure. She's a treasure. She's going in a special spot. I, I tend to display palettes like that. 
that I own, like this one, might as well go to this one. She's on display. I did a whole video about her. These are very old. And it, um, because of all the oxidation, this palette created the most gorgeous sepia um, vibe. I will link that video below for those on replay, or if you watch it later, my live friends, you'll be able to rewatch that video. It was so fun. Um, I did a lot of research on where this came from, and I actually ended up hearing from someone. Uh, let me see if I can get this story straight. It was in Germany, I think, because it does say made in Germany. That was one of the very few clues. Um, and it was handmade watercolors in a little art store in Germany, um, and that there were only maybe a couple hundred made ever. Um, and that was what information I got through the grapevine of this community. Really interesting. So you'll have to watch that video later. So she will, she's been on display since I found her. And this, this cozy copycat, whatever the heck, is going to go on display too because she's pretty special. All right. This one says non-toxic, not non-poisonous, but, you know, I'll, for, I'll forgive them. I'll forgive them. Isn't that great? Love, love the little floating heads. This is my, this is a handmade paint maker from Hawaii. It's not ocean paper. It's the other one. Ha, I used to have Mission Gold in here. Look at this. Mission Golds. As you can see, like, I, I don't, I just like palettes where I can feel their history. None of this is rust. This is, no, that might be a little rust. This one might, might soon need to be rinsed down, dried, buffed a little, and, and, and killed. Um, because she's starting to, she's got a little rust cancer going on. But I, I fight against that machine because I love, um, I love feeling the history and having it, like, in front of me as I work. But yeah, there's there's definitely some stuff going on. Anyone who want to help me with this brand? Um, um, it's not ocean paper, but she's from Hawaii because I want to write it on here. My mom got me this for, oh, she crumbled. It's okay. If your paints ever do this, do not panic. Do not contact the paint maker, please. This is, this is stuff that happens. This, don't don't be like I have defective paints. You really don't. I mean, there's a chance you know you're a paint maker. I don't know whoever they are. Not this paint maker, paint maker, but I mean, there are things that you can do to prevent that kind of stuff from happening. But they're handmade pigments. They're made in all different climates. That just happens. Like put a little water on it and just paint with it for the love. Um, aloha, aloha. I, yeah, is that yes? I think. I think that's right. Is there Aloha watercolors? Yeah, 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 yeah. Aloha. Is it Aloha? Before I write it on here. Because cats don't have thumbs. Oh my gosh, you guys are funny. You guys are funny. Brock, do you, Aloha watercolors typically come in the kind of the basic black palette because that's what mine came in and I took them out of. I think that's it. I think it's Aloha. I'm going to write it on the inside just in case. Brock, you're my hero. Because I do plan on adding to this collection. But mm -hmm. love this. Um, she's in rough shape. If I ever find another one, I will be so happy because um Unfortunately, the design was kind of dumb because the all of the king and the jester's faces were on the very high point of the palette and they got rubbed off. Um, so let's see. American Crayon Company, Sandusky, Ohio, New York. Okay. Made in the USA. Um, lots of rust and stuff, but it actually, I don't know. I just won't. I won't do anything with it. Um, I just won't. I have an, uh, just a, a love of this palette, the way it looks, the way it is. This is my old Holland collection. And yes, again, I was very curious about what they were doing with these couple of peachy moments. Yes, I know. I make very odd selections. But oh, she's one of my favorites. This palette 
has held so many different brands over the years and they've been taken out and yeah. Yeah. Oh, scratch the watercolor pans gently. You mean, you mean like right down in, in the actual, the well of the half pan, like rough up the plastic. Is that what you're saying, Nessa? Cause that makes sense. They look aloha-y. We're talking about the previous palette. Anyway, I love this palette. I will never, never, never change her. Okay. Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> like, just, 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 just can't even. That's perfect. Perfect. Poor Popeye. He definitely needed some um, speech therapy in second grade like I did. American Crayon Company also. How interesting. Made by the same company. I never knew that. Um, Zan says, I feel like this silly question. Where do you find? No, it's not a silly question. Okay, so um, the question is, where do I find these palettes? Um, primarily, I have a couple of searches saved. I get notifications from eBay. Um, I have a couple of searches that I figured out that give me really good results that seem to align with how the people that are listing these word them. So I get notifications every day. And I'll tell you what, it has been a desert out there the last few months. I feel like I feel like I own them all. There is nothing has come up that I don't already own. And I'm like, come on. But I guess that happens when you're a collector. I guess that happens. This is the first thing in my life that I've collected so long and so intensely. So um, Etsy also can be a really good place. You do have to be careful because sometimes I feel like they're not as this is a generalization, but the sellers there aren't as knowledgeable and they're really inflating their prices for palettes that are in, not in great condition. So just be careful. But sometimes you can get a winner there. Um, and I have a little secret kind of backdoor situation as my parents, uh, when they retired, they started up a uh, antique business. They go around and they um, find all the things and resell all the things. And um, I always have them on the hunt. In addition to their circle of friends who do the same things they do, I have them always on the hunt for vintage tins, not just watercolor tins. Um, so I, but that is a small percentage of how I get mine. You, shockingly, you would think I would get more through those avenues because I'm literally connected with like, like a hundred people that my parents know that, that go out to estate sales and so on and so forth. But eBay is by far my biggest source. Okay, I love the fact that these two are made by the same company. Did, ah, did you see what I just did? I gotta glue these in. This is that Polish, um, the Polish brand that were discovered. I guess they were, it was a company that was begun. Um, oh my gosh, please don't make fun of me. I'm like those people they interview on the streets that don't know their general history. Um, whichever world war that would have been they were tucked away too they were tucked away and the brand had begun and made all these paints but never started up again and then they were discovered by someone and they are now being sold as sets on etsy does anybody remember the name of this gal i think there's a bird in the name yeah go hunting go hunting in vintage shops um, by far the cheapest that I have ever found consistently are in vintage shops because they just don't know. They just don't seem to know their worth. They just don't. And I always feel bad. Like, you know, you're, you can expect to pay anywhere between 30 and 50 bucks, sometimes more. You shouldn't be paying more than $50 for something like this. Although Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse, anything Donald gets a premium. But um, I have picked up ones like this for five in vintage shops. Come on, Brock. It, the bird. I I don't. I just don't have another um device by me that I can look these up. But um, her she had a TikTok that went viral. She told the story, and for a while you couldn't even get these because she was having a hard time packaging them quick enough. Um. So the brand on here says Teca T E C Z A. And the next word is W-Y-R-C-B. 
And the last word is C-R-A-J-O-Y-O-W-Y. Oh, and the gal that's selling them, I can't remember her name. So this gal, literally, she shows video of like these wooden crates full of these pans. Um, I did a whole painting on these. Um, I'll get that link in in the um, section in the section below. I think um, the description section below. Uh, the video that I did, uh, it was a whole video dedicated to these, and I painted, um, I painted a flower composition, and the colors were mind-bogglingly intense. So let me not just say it. I'm gonna spray it here. Where did I put my paper? Oh my gosh, some of the things that come out of my mouth are hysterical or strange, one of the two. But I, I do need to put little glue dots in these because they always fall out. Because I think what happened is she had to, these didn't, when she found these, they did not, they were not in these little metal half pans. She had them made. She had them made. So you know, they're not a perfect, perfect, perfect fit. Anybody know the Etsy seller that found these pre-World War II paints? I would love to get that information up on here, but if we don't get it in the live, I will have the link to the video below um, where I paint with these and talk about them at length. These are other, these are ones that also need to sit and, and soak up the moisture for a while. Okay, friends, I did a whole video about this one as well. I will be linking it below. This is another one of my special palettes made in Germany in pristine, pristine condition. Um, uh, now, this is interesting. I remember when I was researching this palette, made in the, made in Federal Republic of Germany. There's a lot of information about this palette in the video that I will link below. Look Look at these pans. I did paint with this. You can tell because I lost some of the, the gorge, the gorge on the pans. But friends, I'm going to wet this one color because I remember this, this particular color from this palette. And we're going to paint with that soon. This is another one that's displayed. She is a absolute beauty in my collection. I adore her. Something I've thought about doing is trying to flip these over and wet them from the other side to preserve this imprint. But then there is also something so magical magical about painting with these imprinted pans. Yeah, this one's amazing. Amazing. No spray it. No spray it, not just say it. <laughs> but yeah, look at look at the graphics. Look at look at this little um puffin and the deer and the drafting table. I just, I just, but why, again, why is it always the boys in these active artistic? Why? Yes, I'm a feminist. <laughs> why is it always the boys on these old tins? Oh, and here's the original swatch card. Look at that. I mean, she is just incredible. Incredible. Angora paint boxes. Oh, here we go. Angora. Don't we have other Angoras? Angora. Same company. This one's just young. Um, this one's newer. See, these are connections I haven't made before because I've not gone through these like this before. All right. Let's go in. These are the, the pre-World War II. Yeah, look at that. Aren't they gorgeous? Very creamy, washy. I remember liking this like tealy color. Yeah. Look at that. Mm. Look. Let's see how that shears out. Mm. Um, what paint brands am I gonna put in my empty tin designs? I've already put in um, I'll show you. Hold on. The botanicals video, I put these um, opaque watercolors from Paul Rubens, I think. These are Paul Rubens. I put them in one, yeah. And I already have, I did this a while ago. I put, oh gosh, did I just sit on a palette? 
This one has my Roman Schmall. Now this is a prototype. This, this doesn't exist for sale because you'll notice the quote is different than the actual purple one that's on the market. But I did this one a while ago. It's my Roman Schmall. And you can see full pan, half pan, and I started the middle row. Love that. And then I also have a, what's in here? I think this might be, oh, this is my Y.E. Handmade Watercolors. Is that how it's pronounced? The Etsy seller. Um, yeah. And this one um, has half pans and quarter pans. So you can see how they fit. Friends, if you're watching this and you're wondering, these are my empty palettes. These are sold on Amazon and on ChristyRice.com. You can get all that info below in the description section. They come in five different patterns, three different sizes, and they're designed for you to fill them yourself. And they do hold full, half, and quarter pans. Yeah. Oh, your botanical has Paul Rubens. That's awesome. Stick some gum Arabic. Just, oh, oh, Nessa. I love that. It won't damage the paint at all. A bit of gum Arabic. Shoot, I could do that right now. Where's my gum Arabic? Where did I send that back? Oh, I sent that back up to the studio. Dang it. When I did my um, Franken palette, I had bottles and bottles of gum Arabic. I didn't know what I was doing. We, we had one foray into handmade paint making. And there was just so much that we wanted to do differently and that we kind of put it to the side. So there are a few of you out there that have my handmade palette. This is my wonder filled palette. She's been destroyed for some reason with some kind of paint. Oh gosh, what is on here? So very few of these were made. Um, I don't even think we made a hundred of them. Anywho, I don't even know if I can get it open. Oh my God, I can't. Anyway, there's my handmade watercolors that are in here. <laughs> can't even get it open. But I love to this day, uh, there's one color that I've been working with my manufacturer on that we developed um, with this palette that I'm trying to develop with my manufacturer. And it's been very difficult. So, all right, let me show you this color on this German. Oh, bye-bye imprint. Bye-bye. This color, I'm going to have to get a new paper, but this color, look at it. Oh, another color I would like to recreate with, gosh, should I make more another Art for Joy's sake palette? I feel like my palette is so controversial. I feel like it upsets so many people. Like, is it worth it? I don't know. I don't know. All right, new paper. But isn't she, isn't she lovely? Oh, had to break in a song for that one. But yeah, she goes back on the shelf. Honestly, this one should be displayed, but I can't yet until I get those to stop flapping around. But I love this tin, so fun. So funny. Okay, this is one of my favorites. I use this in my color theory video because it's just a beautiful example of some gorgeous color theory that's working well, made in England. Gotta be Page of London. This, see, again, this Page of London, this is very, I'd have to do some research to definitively say, but I'm pretty sure that blue bottom is distinctively Page of London. All right. This one was in such good shape. I think, are these my Daniel Smith? Yep, this is my Daniel Smith collection in its entirety. And see, when a palette is full, this is a great example. Remember how we talked, you take out those trays and the palette can be a little wonky. I mean, it's still a little warpy, but not as much. It's harder for me to make that happen. You see that? because she almost full, all right? This one is in great condition, no rust, nothing going on. I fill her edge to edge. There are magnets in here, so they move easily, but they don't move so easily that you can't, right? 
So I love that because I can easily shuffle these around like little chiclets, you know, and reorg as I add things. Although if I add anything more to this collection, somebody come out here and hold my hand and tell me it's going to be okay and put me in a rehab program because seriously, nobody needs to own that much paint. I didn't know I loved vintage tins till I ran into you guys. That's right. Dick and Jane go to the zoo. Yes. Yes, Dick and Jane are oddly out of proportion. Something's wrong with their arms, <laughs> says the person who's terrified of drawing people. Anywho, um, I love that one. One of my faves. Just love the art. Love the color scheme. Um, here's another Popeye. Dagwood and Blondie. No, not Popeye. This is Dagwood and Blondie. It's just very much styled like that Popeye one. Um, same company. And I believe this was in here. Yeah, this is the tag. And I love this. Comes on a little cardboard thing. And it has a little stuck on water tray. Maybe it's a mixing tray. But I'm thinking a kid is going to destroy this. Get water everywhere in no time. And you can see that has happened. Because look where all of the rust is. So this one um, I will not be using. Because I think it's just so cheeky and adorable this is more of a displayer but if i were to this would all have to be taken care of because the rust is clearly spreading but yeah so fun this is a new one this is i was so excited for this one because um sorry friends the one thing about vintage palettes is they're hella loud um so earlier there she is this this yellow one was exciting because it's also Lindsay's. And I, if you remember, I love my Lindsay's palette. So this is the Lindsay's from before, and this is the other Lindsay's. This one looks older. She's got a little, like I need to kind of use a little hammer and get that fixed, but in really good shape. This was the paper remnants from the paper inserts. It's not rust. It's just torn paper. But look, I love the color palette. I love these little vases full of brushes how cute so cute this did come with 12 colors one brush again glenn side just oh i love her let's see what's in here these empty ones as i mentioned these are kind of new um these were all purchased within the last uh eight months or so here we go prime very old prang. A bummer because she's not in the best shape. And it looks like the art is flaking off. And you can actually feel whatever process they use. So it's flaking off. So this one will be displayed, not used. Look at it. Oh. And it's built in. This isn't a tray. This is built-in embossing with all the color names. Here's the brush. Look at the color of that backside. Isn't that gorgeous, that apricot? Nessa, you have found your people, girl. You have found your people. We are family. I got all my pages with me. <laughs> oh my gosh. It, it should be so funny, Melissa, um, because earlier on, I was saying one of my favorite things, like I cannot resist buying a tin that says non-poisonous. It's one of my favorite details. I think it is hysterical. I think we should go back to it. Non-toxic sounds so, so, so hospital-like. Let's go back to non-poisonous because that is cheeky funny. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, maybe you'll like a little poly sealer. Yeah, maybe. Isn't she? Oh. oh mm, yeah. But she needs to get wrapped back up. Because honestly, even this bubble wrap is probably not the safest thing for her. But you know, you know what? I am gonna wrap her up, but I'm gonna she's gonna go right on my shelf. She was in the pile of stuff I bought that I need to unbox in front of people. That's why I hadn't opened her yet. I did a short about this and so obsessed page of london definitely knew the logo changed again 
The logo is on a scroll for the love. But look at the creepy gnomes and fairy. Well, she's not. She's slightly creepy. But look at the artwork. This is definitely newer. Plastic base. Colors barely been used until now. Um, but oh my gosh. Like I can't. Oh, hi. I love the artwork on this one. I'm just going to let that soak. Look at the artwork. Let's just take a moment. What the pen? What the color? How's my French? It's terrible. Look at, look at the pixie dust. The toadstools. Oh, look at the little fairy door. Look at that. Look at this creepy little nugget. There's two of them. I mean, it's just the artwork is absolutely delightful. What is this? Are those his, oh, those are his pants. Okay, those are the rat's pants. Okay. The light, I love, like there's, I think it's the glow from the fairy is hitting the faces of these crazy looking fools and the tree and, and lighting up his pants and his belly. Oh, I'm so laughing right now. Creepy little nugget. <laughs> yeah, dude. He's creepy. Come on. Right? I'm not wrong. Ooh, hot cookies delivered, Brock. Brock, is that why you couldn't answer my, my question about the, the name of the seller of the pre-World War II paints? Because you were off having hot cookies? <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I don't think I could own that even if you gave it to me. Yeah, that's why fairy tales are called grim, but I love it. My ex was a creepy little nugget. <laughs> I'm dying. Oh my gosh, you guys are the best. All right. I'm I'm interested in the magenta. It's very creamy. Oh. Hello. Hello, Paige. Hello. Very nice colors. Very nice. Look at how that blends. Definitely not vegan. I don't know that, but I doubt they're vegan. That magenta stained, but they bl they flow. They flow in. Look at that. Very nice. Anyway, love it. She's a displayer as well. This was sold to me from a community member. It is my first ever Christmas palette, and I love her so much. Uh, I want I want to do something special with this one um, to, like, only paint with during the holiday season. Because if you know me, you know I love a theme. I love a theme. Like, I be carrying a Christmassy purse. I have Christmassy nails when it's Christmassy time. So, like, I feel like this is the only palette I should be painting with during the season. But um, I bought this from a community member and she reached out to me thinking that I'd be a good bet. And boy, was she right. Uh, made in Germany. There's a lot of schmutz in there, so I have to be careful. And the green back. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Let's take a look at a couple of these together. These are that size, kind of iconic size. Um, let me see if there's any others. We're getting down to the bottom of this box. All right, here we go. So this is DeVoe Watercolors. Somebody inscribed their initials in it, which I think is a really, really cute detail. Love this. You can see I was experimenting with a, a modern half pan fit in here. Um, but look at these gold half pans, y'all. I have a couple that have these in them. Here's another one. This is another one of my really special palettes. The best standard colors, transparent and indelible. Love that. Love that. I think this one, yeah, this one has round metal pans. I don't think they come out terribly easily. Um, I have yet to figure out what I want to do with this palette because she's such a beaut. She's a beaut, clock. Oh, yeah. Mm. So good. But anyway, I love these palettes that come with the little metal pans. And then we've got Bright Tone Brilliant on Toxic. 29. This is Imperial Crayon Co. Brooklyn. And look at, I kept this one, haven't used it because it's got the most lovely paper interior with the, the little 
um, chiclets attached to it. She's got some, some rust disease, but that's okay. And then Robin Hood Watcher Color, two words again, don't get it. Art Crayon Company, Hazleton. This is why I bought this one. Hazleton's like a half an hour away from me. This was made in Hazleton. So cool. Nothing inside though, but she's pristine. She's pristine. Love it. Anybody have any favorites so far? I'd love to hear if you have any favorites so far. Let me know in comments. All right. There's a couple here I'm going to show together because they have an interesting, they all have an interesting detail about them. And I'll explain in a little bit here. Um, this one kind of. Um, ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these all are what I would call like micro palettes. Love them, but they are super shallow. I cannot fit half pans in here, uh, but I still love them and I will still collect them. But you can see how narrow they are. See that? So narrow. But but the artwork is divine. Look at this one. Not thrilled about the, the imagery. I love though that this one, I could use this one for a travel palette and just squirt something in here and I would totally do that. Totally. I think this little sheath of paper, of, um, of pillow stuff, styrofoam is original. Winnetou, look at the back, the artwork of the palette filled. But it's so interesting to me, like what, happen they're so cleanly missing where'd they go so but very thin i love these because they could literally fit in some of our wallets this could literally fit in a wallet and i just love that look at this one finest water colors made in england and i was playing around with the art toolkit hands um that one and they don't they're not magnetic, like, or whatever this metal is, doesn't, doesn't stick. Um, and then this one, uh, Holland, I feel like I need to take this with me, the windmill paint box. I feel like this needs to get some fun colors in there and it needs to go to Holland with me. In fact, I'm going to leave this one out and I'm going to work on that. Friends, I am going on a three-week European trip with my my family and extended family uh, in about three weeks. And I'm super jazzed about it. I'm going to be filming over there and I'm going to hopefully go live over there. Um, uh, and we're gonna be um, in Amsterdam to start. And then we're gonna go uh, Eastern France, Western Germany, Belgium, um, Switzerland, and then back up to um, the Netherlands for tulip season. So really stoked. Made in England. Look at this art. They're all coming to see Mr. Gnome paint, including the, the Scotty dog and the squirrel and Bambi and Bambi's mom. I love it. And his hat is so weird and funky. Love. Lyra. This is super cute. I think it held pencils originally. Only one of mine that has a black interior but again, super thin, super thin. And you all know I love this style with these little mixing areas. Look at her. This could actually fit half pans. This could fit half pans. But she's darling, the duck. This feels like um, they were inspired by Beatrix Potter a little bit. And this is Page of London. You can see the little logo up there. Love the art. Oh. We have an active female artist, very exciting. The boy distracted by the other lovely female as it should be, and she is diligently working. This is accurate. This is accurate. <laughs> an owl on the little yellow one. No, I think it's um something with uh, music, an instrument, or um, like a stand, a music stand. I think, I could see owl though. You all need to come to Australia for a retreat. Hmm, a harp. A harp? Oh, a harp. There you go. Velveteen rabbit. Yeah. Is that what it is? 
Oh yeah, that is the Velveteen Rabbit. My dad used to read me that story every night. Loved it. Hmm. Anywho, there's my little babies. Love these. Let's put these off to the side. Now let's take a look at a couple more filled palettes. All right, this one was a project I took with me the last time I went to Utah, and I never got around to it. I always take a, a palette project with me when I go to Utah, and I wanted to switch out my Jasper Stardust paints into a larger palette because I've outgrown this little beauty. This is one of my favorite tins because just let's just talk about it. Everything's out of proportion. The dog is holding a massive brush and it has artwork stamps hanging from it. The kitty cat, I mean, just all of it. There's like a little something in the corner here. Eva, it says Eva. I don't know. I don't know the brand, but she is one of my favorites just for the whimsy of the art. And don't be startled, but this is my Jasper Stardust collection. Very opaque watercolors. Um, they do crumble. I tend not to travel with them for that reason. I've been very open about that. Um, and this is the palette I hope to transfer them into because I have a bunch of new Jaspers that need a home. So I am, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Bunch of new Jaspers. And I'm gonna hopefully put them in here. I, this is a rare one. I hadn't seen this one before. She's in fantastic condition. So I'm going to pop out that um, tray. This is made in England, Page of London again. And it's got the gorgeous imprint. This is my favorite. I love when it has the imprint. But that's where we're going to be at. I'm going to do a little swatchy poo of Jasper just in case you're not familiar with the way his paints are textured. Hello, Francis. But look at, look at the texture and the mass tone of these paints and then how they sheer out for the love. Mm, look at that, let them bump, color bumping, color bumping. It sounds like a, it should be like a R&B hip hop song from the 90s, color bumping. Yeah, I don't know, whatever, just ignore me. But there is Jasper. Go give Jasper a hey on Etsy. He's on Insta. Um, we love Jasper. He's he's prolific. Gorge. Gorge. Mm -hmm. Um, it does fluorescence. I'm a fan. But I do think case for makings, fluorescence are more intense. Jasper's do a lot of I see a lot of granulating with Jaspers, which I also love. There we go. Okay. Speaking of case for making, I'm going to give you a quick look at that one. She's also a palette that needs a new home. Um, gosh, every time I get into this palette, I have a problem with one of their paints. And I always end up talking about it. And I don't want to talk about it, so I'm not going to. But I love this, my little Tom Sawyer palette. Um, not in the best condition, but I've used her a lot. This is um, Avalon Industries Crayon and Color Division in Brooklyn. A lot of rust on the back, but whatever. No big deal. Non-toxic, cute little icons. But super cute. But... We need a new palette because clearly I have some paints. I'm, I don't have them in front of me, but some palettes that I've been gifted, things that I just don't use ever. If only, you know, these aren't my cast offs, but just simply because um, I don't have enough hours in the day and the pa some of the palettes don't fit my style. Um, so I want to give away uh, a palette. It's not, they're, they're different brands. So it's going to kind of be a grab bag. So you're going to be surprised with what comes in the mail. So listen up. I'm going to give you a question to answer. And we're going to give away, and this is for live only. Sorry, replay friends. Um, we're going to go ahead and give away a palette. All right. So the question 
I mentioned there is a particular palette. I've shown two of them. They are my favorites and they have a removable lid that's not hinged. What is the name? What was the name on the front of the tins? My favorite palette that I've shown you, my favorite vintage that I've shown you, I have two of them. They look very different. They have non-hinged removable lids. What was the name on the front of those palettes? All right, already, Lindsay's watercolor, the, what is the name here? I'm sorry. The odd one, 2727. You were correct. You were the winner. I'm impressed. That was fast. Um, go ahead and email hello at christyrice.com. Um, attention, Kristen, and let her know that you've won uh, one of my, one of my uh, non Christy Rice palettes, and she'll know exactly what that means. I don't know what magnets I used in this palette. But look at what it does. Look at what it does. Oh, let's, let's get in here. What did I use in here? What, they're so strong. Oh, I know what I used. I started using these new, these new um, thicker magnets and they are strong. They are strong. Oh, these don't have, oh yes, they do. So these are my Toscana paints. These are my Zeki's. I think Zeki's, yeah, um, from Italy. Little store right there um, by the Duomo. Um, the Duomo, it's like in the center, and there's all these roads um, in Florence that kind of shoot off from it. And it's this little art store is on one of those roads. Pretty sure this is Zeki. I did a whole, yeah. Can you see that? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, did a whole video on these as well. I will link to that. And speaking of that type of palette, here's the big one I have. And this palette is so rough looking inside. Don't be startled, but it's nostalgic to me. Um, this is a page of London. Fade. This, is, this one's got some fade. Um, this one used to house my... Mission Gold collection that I used for many years, almost exclusively. Now it houses my um, 31 Purple Fish, and um, it's a mess, but I don't care. It's all, to me, these are layers of experience. There's old, like, blue dots in here, and I just love it. It doesn't make the paint work any less wonderfully. So there's a look at that. Um love this blend well hexagon crayons so this is a crayon tin um this is also that american crayon company um that was the i just want to show you as a reminder of the little discovery made it's the same these are all the same company all the same and what do i have in here um i think this is just a mini set of daniel smith's with some cat hair yeah there we go. Super cute. Super cute. If you're still with me, say hey. If you're still here and hit with me, say hey. This is my M. Graham set. This is a Stedler tin, so this held um, pencils. These can be found. These are pretty easy to find, and they're always so lovely. Um, and then this is a little insert that I bought from a company called, they're on Etsy, um, Adventurous Art Supply. Adventurous Art Supply. And, uh, Bad decision. I never should have put super honey-based watercolors in such small wells, but you live, you learn. Love the, the hand feel of this. Very solid, solid. All right. This is my um, core. One of my favorite tins for the artwork. The artwork is phenomenal. This I love. The girl's like, oh no, Mr. Man. This is my art time. I don't care what you're doing right now. I love to see an active female artist on these vintage tins. Um, love it. Girl not afraid to fish. Yes. All right. So cute. And then there's my core. We use this also. This, this, this palette had itself a moment in my life. Used it a lot. And again, a lot of yellows. Don't know what my problem is. Yay. I use yellows a lot. Yeah. 
Me too. Yeah, the square shape of the crayon one. I love that shape. It's very fun to travel with. I see a lot of haze. Glad you're still here. If you're watching on replay, friends, can you go ahead and give this video a boop? If you're having fun, you're enjoying this, you're getting involved in the conversation, even though it's on replay, we are here for it and we love you for it. Thank you so much. And friends, my live friends, um, a boop would be so appreciated. A boop is a like and it helps my channel so much. Okay, here's one of my weirdest ones. I don't even know. I don't know. Painting bandit. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Um, modeled after Elton John. Yeah, I don't know. So finest watercolors and brush, non-toxic, Elton John, the painting bandit. And this is my Holbein. These are my Holbeins. You'll see this in a lot of my earlier videos. Holbein was the brand that I modeled many of my uh, my own colors after, my own palette, this, this bad boy. Um, highly inspired by Holbein. There she is. Lots of use, lots of love. This one's a little, this is Page of London. This one's a little dented, but she's heavy. She's heavy too. Here's a second one of my copycats. And this one has, this is all my Windsor and Newton. You know Windsor and Newton because they are, they um, don't have a lot of convenience colors. So you're going to see, like, they don't have the, like, pastels. You're not going to see a lot of that with Windsor and Newton as much as other brands. So a lot of the colors, you can't distinguish them in the palette. It's very hard to distinguish them in the palette. Some say that's a sign of a very high quality watercolor. Um, I say it's a sign of a paint that um, doesn't have white mixed in to make it pastel. I don't know. Or, and, and it can be, um, you know, optical brighteners can be added to lessen that like indistinguishable effect. And, and a lot of brands do that. A lot of like um, lower quality, cheaper brands do add optical brighteners. So they look cuter in the pocket. Anywho, I digress. Mickey, and this is my Rosa. I don't have magnets in here yet. I ordered some new Rosas recently. I think they were Rosas. They didn't come yet. Um, and they'll be going in there. Super fun. Love the artwork. Um, this, this particular one is kind of wonky. Um, it got bent a little. Um, so it doesn't kind of stay well now actually I'm saying that it's staying closed beautifully go figure this is my second to biggest palette the fantabulous palette and she holds all of my schminka everything now I still have some out of here from my blue my all blue situation that I still have not put back, but I've got the Academy pastels. I've got the whole granulating collection here. These have all been swatched and are cataloged and organized. And uh, that, that's my schminka. That's my schminka. Um, I'm going to take a minute, friends, because there is a bigger palette I forgot about. I haven't pulled her out. We've got another blondie. This one appears to be a little newer, or it could just be that it's in better shape. Same American Crayon Company. Um, super cute. I love how Dag was painting a big picture of Blondie. So sweet. So romantic. This is another one of those classic size. I just like the graphics on this one. Active painters of both male and female. I'm happy with that. And again, the, um, the metal pans. Love that. Very good shape. Great for gifting. Uh, this is a bigger one, and the bigger you get when they're empty, the more they're going to warp. Um, so something to think about. The thing that you can do is, I, I've done this in some palettes. Let me see if this would work. Yes. So if you have old trays from your other palettes, the black palettes, if you have those old trays, put them in a big vintage and kind of, you know, it's not going to fit perfectly, but you can have a 48, you could have a 12 here, you could have two 24s maybe, and that is going to really solidify the body and maybe even kind of glue dot these in, a couple really thick glue dots, and it's going to give you more structure. So just a little idea there. There's so much you can do. You could also, this could be a travel case. You put one of these in here, you get your paper towels in here right? 
you get um, a nice cut out some paper, watercolor paper, and put a little clip, tiny clip up here. And that'll all fit in there. It could be your little travel kit and a nice slim profile. Um, you could, you know, you can get a brush going right in here. You probably fit two of the travel brushes in here. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, you get two travel brushes in here. So little, little travel, little travel tip. Yeah, for sure. I actually have one of these that I take to Disney. I don't, it's the one place where I don't take a lot of painting supplies because let's just face it, it just not a lot of time. So I do this. I take my Art for Joy Sake palette, put that in there. I cut paper to fit right here. I put my paper towel here. I have a little drawing pen, drawing pencil, a little clip. I put my travel brush in here and that is my travel set for Disney. Love that. And then it all folds up and it's cute. And people ask me about it and I love it. <laughs> okay, I digress a little bit, but just a little tip to solidify those big vintage palettes that get a little wonky do when you take the trays out. I told you vintage palettes are loud. I, I, I was not kidding. <laughs> take a look at comments. I love that idea. Yeah. No way you can even put brushes. Absolutely. Boopity boop. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I should, I have, I should put my, I have old Holland. I should just pop them in here for the trip. That, that would just make a very Instagrammable moment. Anyway, let's look at the artwork on this. She's gorge. She's gorge. It feels a little Disney to me. I got it. Not going to lie. And here we go. We've got the couple on the terrace. Love this. And they're both painting. She's got her little travel watercolor box and her little cup of water. I just... I can't even. Is anybody else painting? I don't think so, but super cute. Um, all right. And then my biggest. My biggest. This is one. This is available. There are a couple sellers on eBay right now selling this one. And I just want you to show you the sheer size of it. My Alice in Wonderland. And the artwork is spectacular. Look at that. She's got to be a good 18 inches. And then I popped all the paint out of here. So this, all this paint is now in my, um, my Franken palette, link below. But look at this. I mean, what you could do with this bad boy. Look at the pattern on Alice's chair. Just, just so many delightful details. There's a crab. Why is there a crab? Was there actually a crab in like the original? Um, I don't know. That's so funny. There's a crab, there's a parrot. Look at that. Yeah. So there are a couple of these on eBay right now. And if I'm not mistaken, the price is pretty good. Mine is in like almost perfect condition. Um, this is Page of London. Um, you don't often see the red background with Page of London, but it does have the imprint. Isn't that incredible? I don't know what I'll do with her. Just love her and know that she's mine. I don't know. I don't know what girlie's doing. She ain't at like an Italian restaurant. What's happening? But it's just too funny. It's just too funny. I love it. I love it. What else? Any other funny moments? Another little logo here, which whatever. Why are you doing that, Paige? Um, just just fantastic. So there, she's my she's my big one. With so many palettes, how do you pick which to use? I'm picturing you with a giant table with dozens on the go. Um, yeah, so the table I'm sitting at right now is a little bit smaller than um, a, a full sheet of plywood, four by eight. And at any given time, I might have 10 palettes on my table. Now, I do most often paint with my own palette, but I'm always bringing in other things for, for the sake of fun. Shut the front door. <laughs> It does look very similar to the book, right? Yeah, if I got that one, I probably wouldn't need any other. The thing I love about that one, you could hang that on a wall. You could get like, they make um, like plate hangers that are very um, unique now that that accommodate a lot of different size items. They're like, like plate hangers, but that would accommodate an angular item. And you could pop that on your wall and it could become a piece of art. I mean, let's face it. Um, there's moments where I, that's what I want to do with it, but I just haven't gotten around to it because, you know, life. But um, isn't that lovely? Okay, here's two more. 
We've got a Donald and a Goofy. I love, my son loves Goofy. Look at Goofy holding the frame. So cute. I feel like I want to recreate that. There's a spot right outside the castle in Magic Kingdom. It's called Sir Mickey's. And they have a little photo spot in there where they have it manned with cast members all the time. And it's like got beautiful backdrops and they have these empty frames on the wall. And I feel like how cute would it be to like take my brushes and my palette in and recreate my son kind of like being like Goofy because he loves Goofy. I think that'd be so fun. Anyway, haven't done anything with this yet. It's got a plastic insert, which to me is very attractive. I would want to just squeeze my paints right into the plastic because why not? It's in good shape. It's not brittle. Yeah. Um, Donald Duck but Mickey and Minnie are on it. Older illustrations. And what does this say? Per, um, by permission of Walt Disney, Mickey Mouse, LTD. Isn't that great? You're going to see anything with Mickey on it is going to go for more of a premium. Um, just like if it were Coca-Cola or, you know, anything. So I think I paid over $40 just for this small one. Yeah. All right. Little little skinny one that we missed out on. We have another one like this. Do you remember? I love, you know, looking at them all. I'm about to have an avalanche. Oh, for the love. Looking at these all together like this has helped me make so many connections. Friends, look at this. Look at, it's the same artwork. But in it, oh my gosh. What brand is this? Um, made by Fred Leib. Truth Limited, England. Live, live Truth? I don't know. What does this one say? It just says Made in England. So now we have more info about this one. This is by Fred. Can you see that? Probably not, but right there. Mm. Oh, Janelle, you have the Alice? And you display it. Yes, making the art and collecting the supplies. Related, slightly overlapping, but separate hobbies. And they need separate budgets. <laughs> oh, I got this. This this is my tiniest palette. And this I got from Adventurous Art Supply. And I'm very confused as to why it's stuck. There we go. Nope, she's stuck. Oh, gosh. There we go. Tiniest palette. If you look, fine line, thin lead, soft. So it's not actually, it's a little lead holder. But this um, Adventurous Art Supply 3D printed a palette insert. So when I talk about your magic cup, having supplies on the ready, this is perfect for a magic cup, y'all. This would be perfect for a magic cup, right? Get yourself, this is a great, great way to fill a really cute, Beautifully appointed magic cup with these small little supplies. Definitely check out Adventurous Art Supply. Her stock is constantly shifting and changing, but check it out. I have another one of these. <coughs> this one has paint in it. Friends, since I have a second one of these, I'm going to go ahead and give this one away. Um, let's go ahead and think of another question. I don't need two of these. And this was, a, this was one that you all love so much. Um, and I'm going to give away the one with the paint in it. Um, so let me think of another question. Mm. I got to think. I got to think. I got to think. Okay. The palette that had the, um, the artwork on it that was very like fairies and um, had the little rat with pants and the creepy, yeah. What did I call the little, the two little dudes up in the left-hand corner? First one to say it gets this shipped to them. What did I call those two little dudes up in the left-hand corner? Y'all were laughing at what I came up with calling them. The creepy little nugget. Zan Wild, you win. Creepy little nugget. That's right. Oh, wait, I think, hold on. Let me make sure was the first one I saw, but Zan, you got it. You're the winner, the creepy little nugget. Zan Wild, you're the winner. Email hello at Christy Rice. 
attention Kristen and let her know that you won the Amco blue and gold empty palette. Awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this from, from the, the thing. The words are not here. And I don't know where my thing is to remove the thing. All right. We are having fun today. Friends, if you are interested, I mentioned that I was doing... Um, irises on patreon the other day i do have a patreon membership i have a bunch of different tiers they start at a dollar fifty a month you can get a discount for paying yearly and i um do a lot of exclusive lives i do one of the tiers is an exclusive video monthly um just a lot of good stuff if you want more of me um and if you want to support me in another way maybe you don't need more products and you want to support me it's a great way to do that um so anywho all the information about my Patreon membership is in the description below if you want to find out more. And you can sign up at any time for a free seven-day trial. Get access to all the current and past content and see if it's a fit for you. There's the painting. We already did the giveaway of this one. I'm just making a little pile for Kristen so she knows what's going on. Uh, let me see if I have any more in here. Um... Just this little guy, a little playtime. You can find these. These are everywhere. Um, I think a lot of these were made, um, the company Binney and Smith made in the USA. So these you should be able to find really affordably and they're cute. Love it. All right, friends, we have a finale here. I mentioned it. Let me just get some of this put away. This is a great time uh, if you've had fun. If if you've enjoyed yourself, if this has given you an uplift, if, all the things, give the video a boop, show it some love, show me some love. And uh, I am appreciative. I'm so grateful for it. I have another beauty to show you. Let me just get these put away and Ralph can edit out the noise. You're wondering who Ralph is. He's my editor, and he he makes the replay of my live videos so much more enjoyable for a replay audience. Because there's certain things that just only make sense when you're live. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh gosh, I just ran into a pile of pallets with my chair. All right, here we go, friends. This has been a long time coming. Mm. We're gonna edit out that mess. All right. <coughs> Get myself a drink. I never opened this past, just opening the box to make sure what I ordered was in here. There was actually two pieces in here. I don't know what that is. I ordered this last year. Don't, uh, don't even ask me how I can control myself and not open these things. But I just, I really love to open them in front of, in front of the community. Oh, I'm just like literally getting teary. Mm. I've not, I've not opened this. So first of all, the, let me pull this down before I start talking. The woodwork. This is like inlaid. Can you see that? It's inlaid. The wood has warped a little. See that, that, that I believe is a warp. Honestly, this could be soft wood. Something could have been rested on here for a long time to make a divot like that. It doesn't so much look like a warp because it's not showing from this angle. I mean, it, oh my gosh, lock and key. I wonder if, oh, is this, no. I wonder if the key, I bet you the key is not in here. Ow, these scissors are dangerous. These scissors like have, punctured my skin. 
Anyway, I digress. This little mixing cup. Now, is it for this palette or this one? We'll find out. You should see my studio right now. It's a hot mess. Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay, ready for more styrofoam. All right, Royal Paint Box. Oh, look at, yeah, something happened. I, I'm remembering they had described this in the listing. String, oh yes, this is why I bought this. I remember. I remember now. Anybody get that reference? Come on. Anybody get that reference? I remember now. These little watercolor paint chips, whatever you want to call them. We're going to look at these closely. I just want to get the styrofoam out of here. This is packed beautifully. They did not mess around. Um, they didn't miss a one. Yeah, one of those. Okay. Oh, look at they are in pristine condition of oh, the brush. The brush usually you can get such a sense of the age from the brush. Look at the wood is so thin. Wow. So they really they package this like they meant it. All right, blocking the light here. Let's take a look. What does it say? Pink, pine, pine color, pine watercolors. It's a unicorn and a lion. Let's see if I can get that to look at that. You don't need to see my silly nails. Amidst this gorgeousness. Look at that. Creepy little nugget. I'm still seeing them. Looks like some people painted on this side already. This is interesting. Just in time for the finale. English brand. Holy smokes. Yeah, never used. I think they were used. Look at on the back. Somebody, somebody was smart. They wanted to preserve. Let's see some of these others. Yeah, a little bit of use. A bit of use there. Look at the back. My gosh, I want to use them. I want to use them. But what we'll do is we'll, I am going to use them because life is too short. We're going to follow suit and preserve. Yeah. All right. Wet these a little bit and let them sit. I'm going to leave, I think, the styrofoam in the bottom there for a while. I don't know much about this palette. Being that I just opened it, it's gonna, oh. I'm gonna not be talking much about anything because I don't know anything. All right, let that sit for a little bit. I'm gonna look at questions, but and she gorge, and she gorge. Beige and gold, so pretty. Yes. It does deserve its own video. I know. I know. I It's been on my list to have its own video for a long time, and I just never get around to it. So I'm like, you know what? No. I am. I'm, I'm pulling it out for the vintage palette. I'm, 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 I'm pulling it out for the review. Um, that's the Royal Coat of Arms of the UK. Christy, don't do it. <laughs> I did it. All right. Let's see here. See if these have softened up at all. A little bit. Mmm, not much color here at all. All right. I'm a user, friends. I'm I'm gonna use the paints. Yeah, not much color. This green, I had hopes, high hopes for the green. Better, better. Gosh, they're lovely. But yeah, not a lot going on there. That's okay. Oh, thank you, Chrissy. Glad you have 
Uh, I'm glad you enjoy and have all the brushes. Yeah, the gold green is gorgeous. Ancient watercolors. I think you're saying that the beautiful antique watercolors are magnificent. I think my my French is terribly rusty. Oh, the King Charles wedding invitation had that coat of arms. Interesting. Smells. Let me see. Uh, no. And I do have my smell. I didn't lose my smell. There's not even a must. Interesting. Not even a must. All right, let me see. This is sat for a little bit longer, but I can tell it's just not releasing. There's more now. Okay. See, I feel like you would have to just soak these so much to get the color out of them. I don't, I don't know that I want to do that because I want to preserve the imprint. I'm so torn. But yeah, they definitely, they need to sit and soak and then they do release more. They're gritty. Um, so definitely a display piece, but uh -huh. I'm not sad about it. Not sad about it. Let's take a look at this one. I don't recall the details about this one either. Okay, these scissors. I gotta be careful. Because they're mean. They are mean scissors. See, you gotta be careful because they don't even know what they're doing. It's it's not horrible, but it is ripping off some of it. I, I'm definitely disappointed that they would put tape on this box. So annoyed. Actually, this might be this might be wood. Paper covered balsa wood. I think that's what we've got here. And the lid is fully paper. It's really cool. Um, it's it's just disappointing what they did here. Really disappointing. And see the tape I left there, and I don't like the way that looks. But anyway, let's get beyond it. Um, but look at these. Uh, this is what drew me to this piece because these paint chips are like little flowery imprints. I think the brush bristles are stuck in there. Look at that. They're so pretty. I don't know why some of them, I think it's been used and rubbed off, but look how pretty. Too late. Heat it first. Oh no, I was totally and it won't rip. See, I didn't know that. I'm impatient. I'm an impatient one. I'm an impatient one. I was totally in the zone. It's okay. But look at these. I'm also, you know, friends, I like I'm a user. So like I like get disappointed and I see a thing that happened and I'm like, you know what? but I'm going to use it. And so I just, it's just my personality. I don't know. I know I probably created a very cringe moment for many of you with what I just did. It is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Since there's no smell, it's likely, so we're talking about this one. Since there is no smell, it's likely that it was preserved well. Yeah. Like I'm not getting like a basement smell. Yeah. If there was a smell, then you would either have a bad situation or it would have to be a natural scent. There's no smell. Interesting. It gives a character. Yeah. Honestly, it, it's not horrible. It's not horrible. I'm going to go put the hold this. I have my heater on. There's a little piece of tape left. I'm going to go see. Oh, that heater's hot. Anyway, what I was saying is this one is in rough shape. I do not pay a lot for it, so that's a good thing. Oh, that's warm. Oh, gosh, you were so spot on right. Yeah. I could probably paint that. Yeah, look at that. Guys, guys are so smart. See? My impatientness gets me every time. You were so dead right. This is probably another cringy moment for some of you if you like to keep your stuff historically sound. But look at 
I feel pretty, so pretty. It's kind of like putting a little, little of that like touch up marker on furniture, right? Same difference. It's archival. Look at that. That worked. I won't be using those, these, so like, I'm not worried about like that part getting wet or whatever. These would be so pretty on the wall. If I glued these in, like, cause it's got, look at this little pretty like floral pattern. If I got this all glued in and see how stuff is like coming apart and then just like displayed it like this with the lid, that would be so pretty on the wall. Right? All right, friends, which is your favorite palette? Which is your favorite that I've showed you today? Thank you for that heat suggestion. We got a little work around here for my impatient boo-boo moment. My also my I was like super frustrated with the packaging and the person who did the packaging that I was not thinking straight. But let me know. Head to comments. Let me know what your favorite palette of the day, if you could possibly choose one. Dude, what is in this? I don't know. What's something? Blech. These are like random whites. I find it hard to believe these are actually meant to be here. Like maybe brushes here, but I almost think these were like maybe from another set. Cause like, why would there be two whites? So strange. This one was broken. But again, she's a really, really nifty one. Very unique. Um, while the lid isn't wood, the base is covered with paper as we discovered. It is better to be used and loved stored in a box. Life is short. Enjoy your treasures. Indeed. I have not touched my paints in about a year. I try to catch as many lives of yours as I can. Well, hey, you're knitting. You're being creative. That's fantastic. I would encourage you, though, to get those paints out because, you know, life is short. <laughs> yeah, it is perfect. It's not cringe. Shit happens. It does. Um, gorgeous idea. Do it. Royal box. Best live ever. Love it. It's so hard to choose just one. I found the one with a couple on the balcony overlooking the water. Oh, you did? You found it, Virginia? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I love it. I love that you found that one because I, that one was, for me, that was uncommon. Huh. Sorry, I had to blow my nose. I like the tiny lead tin the most. I know. I actually kept that one out because I'm going to fill it and put it in my purse. I'm going to fill this. And I'm going to keep that and a travel brush in my purse. Um, yes. I don't know anything, but that Alice in Wonderland palette could be my fave. Yeah, the Wooden Royal one. Yeah. Yeah. Wash your hands, avoid touching your mouth in the process. If you're worried, you can always talk to a paint scientist. Yeah, um, I'm so bad with that stuff. But yes, after touching all this, I will be washing my hands. I did blow my nose, but I used a Tisha. I thought it was water wells too, but it's paint. It definitely feels like paint. I don't know. I know the neo color was the the star of the day. Look at that. Oh, up here. I mean, come on. Completely, completely redeemed me of my impatience. But yeah, the heat trick. Holy moly, that worked. How did I not know that? Yeah, awesome fun. Canadian seller. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. <sighs> oh my goodness, friends. This was a blast. Let's not even look at that. Cause it's going to make you sad. <laughs> uh, wow. 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 
I would love to hear from you. I would love for you to find me on Instagram at Christy the Painter. If you're starting to add to your vintage collection, I want to see. I want to see what you've been inspired to find. I also want to see how you're using your vintage palettes. That's so exciting to me. So please find me there. Um, find me on TikTok. And um, let's keep that conversation going. And friends, this has been a blast. Thank you for being here with me today. If you're on replay, I hope you've enjoyed listening and hanging out with us. Uh, so friends, let's let's get our vintage paint on. Let's see what we can make of these. All right, take care.